Welcome to San Diego, California. Welcome to Spirit Night and welcome back to action for the UC Davis Aggies for the first time in seven weeks. UC Davis will play a basketball game and it will be on the road as UC San Diego welcomes the Aggies to Remac Arena. Steve Quist had Mendenhall getting you ready for this two game Big West Conference series. And before we tip things off, let's start with our keys to the game brought to you by UC San Diego Health. All right, Steve, well, for the Aggies, of course, you want to shake the rust off early, first game in seven weeks, and then they want to get the ball to sophomore Ezra Magnon, the reigning Big West freshman player of the year, has scored 20 or more points in each of their first three games out of the first four. For UC San Diego, they want to get off to a quick start, get Davis out of a rhythm early with their shutdown defense, and push the tempo, see if... The Aggies are really in basketball shape early on, run up and down that floor. Well, the Aggies last played on December the 4th of last year. They had 11 straight cancellations due to Yolo County regulations that wouldn't allow them to either host a game or even travel. So as you look at the records and you look at Jim Less and his UC Davis Aggies, I think they have to be just relieved that they're here, they're on the floor, and they're ready to play. Yeah, certainly the Tritons can empathize with having uh, long layoffs before going out on the court. And uh, for UC Davis, finally a chance for them to see a different uniform for the first time <laughs> in a long time. Big West opener for the Aggies. Meantime, the Tritons coming off being swept at UC Santa Barbara last weekend when Coach O felt uh, that they played really only one good half, and that was that first half a week ago tonight. And then after that, three pretty poor halves. Yeah, and I thought that he also pointed out uh, Mikey Howell, who had been out sick, is still kind of working his way back into being fully healthy. And I, I think uh, he's got a chance to show that he is here tonight. He's one of those guys, when we talk about pressing the issue and pushing the tempo, that can certainly do that for the Tritons today. Yeah, two weeks ago when Irvine was in for a non-conference series, Mikey had a fever. He tested negative for COVID but didn't play and just was not back to 100% a week ago for two games at UC Santa Barbara. And, of course, he is the spark plug that runs the engine here for the Tritons. Baxter to jump at center against Kennedy Kohler. And it's UC Davis in blue that will have the opening possession. I think one of the keys is you've got to keep them out of the lane. And there's a whistle and a foul very quickly into this one. You've got to keep Ezra Magnon from getting into the lane and getting his points. He is the leading scorer coming in at 21 points per game in the Big West Conference. Yeah, he had four 20-point games all of his freshman year. Last year, this year, you mentioned he's already got three. Mikey Howell with a quick foul and in the lane. That shot missed there by Caleb Fuller, but they get an offensive rebound. And on the drive, a kick out and a three on its way by Elijah Pepper. And that goes down at a quick start for Davis. Like a team right there that's like, hey man, we haven't played in seven weeks. We're gonna do everything we can to get an opening bucket. Yeah, and they certainly did. One thing you notice right away, especially after seeing UC Irvine here a couple of weeks ago, the size difference not as big. They play pretty evenly size-wise. Yeah, and that's a relief for the uh, Tritons. We can tell you that. Opening possession for UC San Diego and White. Here's Pope taking a three, and Pope gets the shooter's bounce to tie things up. Nice job by Pope. A good decisive shot there to tie things up. This is the Tritons' first ever Big West home game, and it comes on spirit night here. Remember, that game two weeks ago against Irvine was a non-conference game. And there is Kohler, and Kohler with a mid-range jumper. Kennedy Kohler out of Pima Community College gets you 10 points a game. Yeah, Kennedy Kohler uh, actually is a former UC San Diego Triton a couple of years ago. That's right, I thought I remember that name. He's out of Las Vegas. Really good start for Davis. Two possessions, two buckets, and the same can be said for UC San Diego as the Australian connection connects there. Hadley to Baxter for the bucket. Well, I got to tell you, every year this is one of my favorite nights, Spirit Night, and I tell the fans right now, well, we certainly miss you. We got some prizes to give away as we get deeper into the show. Pepper on the drive had it knocked away. And so a good start for both teams. We've only had one missed shot in the game. It was UC Davis that took it on their opening possession, and they got a second chance opportunity by getting the offensive rebound. And there is a 
Whistle and a foul. It'll go as a turnover and Kennedy Kohler called for the miscue. Little hip check there on the screen and he got caught. Notice we've seen a lot of illegal screens in the two months we've been doing basketball. Yeah, it's a point of focus, the moving screens and, and also just that jutting that hip out. They're not letting you get away with that anymore. Hand off to Hadley. Baxter rolled off the pick. Here's Pope, and Pope misfires on his second three-point attempt. You're not going to see him miss a lot of those. Good crossover. Mannion kicks it out. As they work it around the perimeter, here's Damian Squire. And here's Mannion. Remember, you got to keep him out of the paint. They do so there, but it doesn't matter because he's baseline right of the lane and still makes the bucket. Well, and he uh, caught Mikey Howell with his hands down. You got to get your hands up against a guy like Mannion who's uh, not afraid to shoot it from within 10 feet. Yeah, I think you can see why there. He shoots 45%. Again, the top scorer in the Big West. But again, they haven't played in seven weeks. Howell looking for an assist to Baxter. Lots of length in front of Baxter and it goes out of bounds. It'll stay with UC San Diego. We should tell you that Mikey Howell is six assists shy of third place all time at UCSD on the career assist list. So you yeah, should get that this weekend. And he uh, passed up uh, assistant head coach Clint Allard for that fourth spot. Now I ask you the hard question. You know who's next? I do, actually. Rodney Lusane, who had 425 from 1990 to 1994. Well, he's six away from tying him. Three minutes into this first half, 7-5 lead for Davis, who hasn't played since December 4th when they beat a non-Division one team in William Jessup at home. And how about Pope? What a start, hitting two of his first three shots. Yeah, he uh, likes that matchup, and Mannion's been on him most of the time. And they get it inside to Pepper, and Pepper splits through a couple of defenders, got away from Rochak, and scores to make it 9-7. Speaking of Rochak, we haven't seen him get that patented dribble drive we saw so much of against UC Irvine <laughs> yeah. yet. Boy, they really beat Irvine inside. Man. Green didn't even take a shot that day. There it is. Yep, and then there's Rochak going to the hole against Kennedy Kohler, who, by the way, leads the Big West with just over a block a game. And Rochak, such a weapon. He shoots 58%, and most of that is like what you just saw. God, I love this Davis ball movement, by the way. Well, they're really crisp with those passes. Step back three deep from Kohler is no good. Pope lets it go out of bounds. And that brings us to our first media timeout. A fevered pace. Nobody wants to miss a shot here in the early going. And for Coach O and his UC San Diego Tritons, they're even with Davis, who's playing for the first time. Nine-nine tie as we come back. Did you know that UC San Diego is ranked as the eighth best public university in the United States by US News and World Report? Find out more about one of the world's preeminent institutions at www.ucsd.edu. Steve Quist, Ted Mendenhall, welcoming you back inside an empty Remac Arena on what is spirit night here. Normally this place is packed and all the different colleges on campus are uh, playing games and trying to out cheer each other. Instead, we do it virtually this year. And so far, we've been entertained to a pretty good game, a 9-9 tie, five apiece for Pepper and Pope. Sounds like a morning show in Omaha. <laughs> but each guy has five of the nine for their respective teams. And there's an offensive foul on Gabe Hadley. Yeah, the issue there for Hadley put that chicken wing out the uh, elbow going into the chest of his defender and you see the arm extended away from his body easy call for the official elijah pepper takes the charge that is the first turnover of the game for uc san diego and here's manyan who's made one shot gets it to pepper who rises up misfires and a defensive rebound, which is so important these days for UC San Diego to get, and Pope got it. Got to limit those offensive possessions. Yep, and a quick catch and shoot three there by Hadley. 
and he buries it. He averages seven points a game. Tritons now have a three-point advantage. Manyan through traffic. Reminds me a lot of TJ Shorts that they had a few years ago when they went to the NIT, and I think even maybe he might have been on that NCAA tournament team as well. Manyan got around Rochak and can't convert on the reverse lay-in attempt. And they do get back on transition defense pretty good, don't they? Pope, catch, shoot, misses. And the rebound by Davis. Well, I was telling you at the break, I felt like this was a pace the Tritons needed to slow down a little bit. Aggies average 80 points a game, but also give up about 73. Yep, they've only beaten one Division I team so far. Miss shot there by Pepper. The Aggies, as we mentioned, two and two. That only win was over Santa Clara at the Division I level. The other one was over William Jessup. Here's Rochek backing in on his defender, the San Jose transfer, Christian Anegwe. Still a three-point lead. Yeah, Anegwe uh, actually just became eligible during that shutdown because of the NCAA change in the transfer rule. Three taken there by Caleb Fuller. He's a junior out of England. That's his first shot attempt. Killingsworth to Rochak on the drive, stop the drive, and they've got a reset up top. Two substitutions apiece when play is dead. Driving his Hadley, got around his defender and count it. Oh man, I think he surprised Caleb Fuller with that quickness to the hole there. He most certainly did a chance at a three point play and a chance at a six point lead in the early going. Wow, great job by Hadley. Really set Fuller up, got him flat footed and blew past him. First on Fuller, team foul number two for Davis. And here's the Australian Hadley who started his career at New Mexico State. He was on the podcast, right, with uh, Jeff yeah, Turrell? Yeah, the Triton cast with uh, Jeff and Jenny, and uh, great job. He, one of the funny things he said, uh, his teammate, Hugh Baxter, also from Australia, he said he was really happy to see a familiar face, and he helped him keep his Australian accent. He was starting to sound too American. Yeah, he was starting to get too much into the hip-hop, right? And also his favorite food in the U.S. is Hot Pockets. What? <laughs> Hey, we've all been in college. We had to survive on that. There's a travel by Ada Adebayo. Yeah, he's a sophomore also from England. I guess if I was that age, I probably would have gone with Top Ramen, so I get it. Oh, I lived a lot on just that 99-cent pasta from Safeway. <laughs> Here's Jace Rockamore into the ball game, running the point. Well, they'll have two point guards in there now with Mikey Howell as well. Jim Lass in his 10th season started four guards for Davis. Good defense here by Davis. Yep. Three to go. Rockamore's got to pull the trigger on a desperation three, and it's a shot clock violation. Well, they did a great job hedging on defense. Gabe Hadley thought he was going to have another dribble drive, got cut off on a double team, and things kind of shut down from there. With a five-point advantage, Davis has the basketball. Inside of 13 minutes to go here in this first half, they're two and two, their only Division I win, as we mentioned, over Santa Clara. Haven't played since beating William Jessup on December the 4th. Have had eight Big West Conference games canceled, so this is their Big West opener. And here it is, almost February. On the drive, great little handoff there. Man, super drive by Adebayo. Hands it off and scoring the bucket is Damian Squire. Again, we talked about that ball movement. There's just something you see about Davis that you really like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're very well coached. Splitting the defenders and giving of himself is Mikey Howell for another assist. Baxter finishes 16-11. That looks like the Mikey Howell that you expect to see all season. Howell climbing up, getting closer to third place all time at assist. Over the top, perfect pass inside. Damian Squire trying to get it in to a Negwe, and a Negwe is fouled. And with 11.45, we go to the break. Five point advantage for UC San Diego, their first ever Big West Conference home game here on Spirit Night. Back to Remac Arena after this.
there's always that someone. Someone who stands out from the rest. Those who do something most would never dare to attempt. There's always that someone who will make a difference. Thinking, pushing, asking, solving. Just imagine what 75,000 of those someones can do. You're more than your successes. You're more than your failures. You nasty. You're the work. You want that smoke? Give him that fire. to win a Big West championship. Like explorers of the new world, these 11 teams will try to navigate an ever-changing landscape. It's about more than just winning games. It's overcoming adversity and reflecting the pride of an entire university. And it's never meant more than now. This is Big West Basketball. for UC San Diego, who last week on the road at Santa Barbara in Big West play, felt like they played one really good half, and that was a half like this, right, on a Friday afternoon against the Gauchos. And then after that, in the two-game series, they played three bad halves. So we hope to, to buck that trend here against Davis, and so far so good, shooting almost 60% from the field. Well, and uh, not only that, but they're spreading the love around. Bryce Pope and Gabe Hadley each with five points, Hugh Baxter with four, and defensively, Ezra Mannion with uh, just one for two. The fact they've held him to just two shots so far shows that's been the focus of their defense, and usually that's what you'll see with an Eric Olin team. They'll focus on one aspect of your offense and try to shut that down. Before we went to the break of concern, Gabe Hadley, you see him on your screen there, picked up his second personal foul. So one of the Triton starters will be on Eric Olin's bench probably for the final 11.45. We might not see him again until the second half. A Negwe makes one of two, the San Jose State transfer. It's a four-point game. Mikey Howell now four assists away from third place on the UC San Diego career assist chart. Keep you updated on that. And here's a whistle and a foul. I'll tell you, a guy that could start moving up that all-time list in his Triton career is number 22 on the floor, Jace Rockamore. Yeah. He's averaging four assists a game, and he's every bit as adept as Mikey at finding the open man. Yep, and he'll have you know that extra year, too, if he so chooses, right? Everybody gets these years back. And Jace, who's about to run this one down to the backcourt, is just a redshirt freshman. Four-point advantage, nearly a steal. Rocek is going to be able to grab that in the backcourt because it was tipped. And so they have a power play, sort of, and Mikey was looking for another assist to Rocek, and it went out of bounds. Last touch by Davis. Yeah, it looked like there, like Rocek wasn't sure if he should pick that one yep. up or not. Now, a couple of substitutions. First look at Caden Rashid, Killingsworth back in. It's only three to shoot here on the clock, on the shot clock, so you got to you got to really, at this point, make sure you're cognizant of that and get it in and get a shot here. Howell goes to the bench along with Rochak. Oh, they, I'm sorry. They put it back up to 15 now because it was last touched by Davis. So from three back up to 15. And so you got a little bit of time now. Here's Killingsworth. He got to the elbow. He caught it. He shot it. He missed it. Yeah, that's his sweet spot. He doesn't yep. miss those often. No, he was really good in the first two games against St. Catherine and struggled to find the shot of late, but you know it's in there, it's coming. Anegwe with the head fake and the drive too hard and another offensive rebound for the Aggies. Again, point of emphasis this week for Coach O. He wanted them, his team to crash on the defensive end. Good entry pass inside is going to result in a foul there. B.J. Shaw was hit underneath. And so Shaw is going to go to the free throw line. Like uh, Baxter took a shot to the chops at the end of that as well. And so here's B.J. Shaw. 
Six six sophomore from Oakland, California. He prepped at the Brewster Academy in New Hampshire. Fouls on Caden Rashid. That's his first. And another missed free throw in the early going for Davis. And they are one of three at the free throw line to begin the proceedings. And as you might imagine, Jim Les uh, substituting liberally, trying to keep these his uh, team's legs under them after such a long layoff. Yeah, I asked Coach Olin about how hard it is to scout a team that hasn't played since December the 4th in seven weeks. And they've had to look at some early work and some stuff from last year. As you look at Jim Les, it's just amazing. I mean, they had no positive test, just Yolo County restriction said, we're not going to let you host anybody, we're not going to let you come. And you know, one of the big jobs as a head coach is keep your guys motivated, right, for when they tell you you can get back in. And they lifted the restrictions as the cases went down. And I'm happy for the Aggies because. Absolutely, yeah. You know, I don't want to see kids not play. Baxter takes a three and makes it. Rattled at home right there. And it's a big one because it extends the lead to the biggest of the night for the Tritons at seven. And for Baxter personally, he's been struggling from three-point range, and, and that's a big part of his game. Yeah, he was three for his first 16 on threes before hitting that one. That's a great point. Here's Fuller to Magnon, who they've kept from scoring. They kept him out of the lane. And here's a three that is good. Nothing but the bottom of the net there for Squire, the junior from Quebec. He's out of Wasatch Academy. That's where he prepped in Utah. Utah State had that really good guard who went to Marquette that was out of Wasatch Academy a couple of years ago. Oh, and, great pass. Yep, Baxter makes an extra pass to Rockamore, runs the baseline and bangs it off the window for two. 21-16. Triton's getting good looks, good shots. And let's see, that's out of bounds. Last touch by Davis on the drive there. I've got to say, uh, for Mannion, for a guy who's averaging 20 points per game, he's a very unselfish player. He does, he is not trying to force things. And the Tritons are keeping him from having an impact right now on the offensive end. Just the third turnover of the game for Davis. UCSD has the only points off of turnovers in this game, and it would be just a bucket, and that's it. Hand off to Pope, back to Baxter. He'll pull the trigger on another three, and the rainbow arcing triple is in. Very well played there. Baxter set the screen, then went right back up top, and his defender, Kennedy Kohler, didn't follow him there. After opening the season three for his first 16 from beyond the arc, the big Australian is two for two, shooting threes in this game. Mannion from the elbow left, missed off the front of the rim. Ball is loose. Killingsworth has it. Down on the other end and seemingly injured is Rashid. My goodness, I'm not sure if it's his knee, if he hit his head, or it's his ankle, for goodness sakes, but he took a shot. And Mikey Howe will have to come back in. We should mention, too, that there is one guy on the roster who will not play tonight. That's Jake Kosakowski, who is a freshman forward who's a really good shooter. He didn't play because of an ankle tweak the second game at Santa Barbara. He's not going to play this weekend. And that's the other ankle from the one that he had surgically repaired going yep. into the year. Exactly. So the Tritons will be a little bit undermanned. Here's Baxter, three for three, and another big assist there for Mikey. And it's 27 to 15, a 12-point advantage for the Tritons. And talking about shot efficiency, I know you're going to talk about that as we go on during the broadcast. Baxter, about as efficient as you can get. Yep, and a steal. How about that? Mikey getting in the passing lane. Baxter came away with a loose ball. And they can get more here. And a double dribble yep. by Howell. So he turned it over. And we've got a break in the action. This might be, don't hold me to this, but this might be the biggest lead the Tritons have ever had in the Division I era. 7.47 to go in the first half. It's UC San Diego 27, UC Davis 15.
Tritons with a 12-point lead, 27-15. Did you know that 16 Nobel laureates have taught at UC San Diego, including current faculty member Harry Markowitz? Find out more about one of the world's preeminent institutions at www.ucsd.edu. What a start for the Tritons, and what a start for Hugh Baxter. He's made five of seven shots, including three threes in three attempts. A career-high 13 points for the Australian, who stands 6'8". He's a senior from Melbourne. A Colgate transfer. He played in only 15 games over his first and only season at Colgate. And on the drive, there's a violation against UC Davis. Yeah, as Pepper, he carried the ball like he was a fullback with running over the goal line. That's their fifth turnover here in the first half. Clock rolling, coming up on seven and a half to go. Triton shooting 64% in this first half. And UC Davis, not too bad at 43%, but Triton's red hot right oh, now. Oh, Killingsworth to Baxter. Have yourself an afternoon. Woo. The lead is now 14. And Baxter rewrites his career high. He's got 15. Squire too hard for Negwe, and he touched it last. Turnover starting to mount now for Jim Les's team. Well, you're certainly seeing uh, some of that rust right now with UC Davis. Not very good spacing there offensively, and that's why the pass went awry. Yeah, you know, the other thing, too, you haven't played in seven weeks. You were welcoming six newcomers to your roster, right? Yeah. So you're looking for chemistry, and how do you find it when you can't play? Three guys who are transfers. Hadley back in with two personal fouls, so they're going to roll the dice, and he traveled. So a turnover with 6.45 to go here in the first half. Hadley had uh, that early three in the dribble drive, and since then UC Davis said no more of that, wondering what kind of uh, changes they're going to make in defending Hugh Baxter. Triton shooting 67%. Manyon got a good look, drives into the paint and bangs it off the window. The one point of emphasis defensively this week when you talk to Coach Olin is we got to keep that guy out of the paint, and they couldn't there. Four points for Manyon. But I guess that's better than giving up on his average of 21, huh? Killingsworth a deep three. That's just their third miss. They're five of eight now from beyond the arc. Squire trying to go coast to coast, lays it up. Can't get it. Killingsworth has it. And in transition, let's see if Mikey can push it here for a bucket. Hadley deep three is good. Their sixth three-point make of the first half. Mikey Howell with the no-look pass there to set him up. 32-17, to 17, a 15-point advantage for the Tritons. Manyan, bounce pass, low post. Inside it goes to Anegwe. He missed. Good offensive rebound and a bucket for Damian Squire. Yeah, somebody's got to box him out there. He weaseled his way in amongst the trees. Seven for Squire here in the first half. 13 point advantage. Baxter hands it off to Hadley. Hadley back to Baxter. One on one, he's got some size and he took an extra step. Man, he didn't need to do that. He probably just could have stepped back and made the jumper over his smaller defender. Rochak back in, Baxter off the floor after having a career high 15 and not even 15 minutes on the floor. Yeah, good stuff out of Hugh Baxter. Now he's off the floor. Where's the scoring gonna come from? Yep. Here's Manyan driving into the lane, kick out Adebayo. Adebayo with a crossover, drives into the lane, changes hands. Hadley was there to defend it. And a whistle and a foul, offensive foul going to be called. You see Baxter, the career high 15 points. His previous career high had been eight points, done multiple times, but the last time would have been last weekend against Santa Barbara. Maybe uh, this uh, getting back into a rhythm and playing back-to-back -back weekends serves him well. Foul was only the fourth team foul on Davis. 
And they wound up getting a Negway, and in a breakaway, throwing it down for Davis is Adebayo. Sophomore from London, England. Barking Abbey School. They have two on their roster from Barking Abbey School. Yeah, Mikey tried to do too much there, turned it over, and Davis has a chance here to get back into this one. Pepper short on the floater. That should be off of Davis, it is. That went off the knee. Yep, kicked out of bounds there by Caleb Fuller. You don't see that happen too often from out there beyond the arc, but he kicked it out. All right, let's see if the Tritons can slow things down offensively now. Got a little out of control the last two times out and turned it over. Pepper leaves the floor. Cameron Baugh out of Alameda, California comes in. I remember doing one of his state championship games. Play for Don Lippy, I think, at St. Joseph Notre Dame High School. Always a great program. Always, it seemed, every year at Sacramento playing for a state championship. Howell into the corner, Rochak. Likes to drive to the bucket, and Rochak is fouled on that drive. See if they got Manion here. Foul is, in fact, oh, well, they got an Negway. Yeah, an Negway instead. That's going to be his second here. And we break. 3.52 to go here on Spirit Night in the first half. UC San Diego with a double digit lead. They're up 11 on the UC Davis Aggies, 32 21. There's always that someone. Someone who stands out from the rest. Those who do something most would never dare to attempt. There's always. There's always that someone. Someone who stands out from the rest. Those who do something most would never dare to attempt. There's always that someone who will make a difference. Thinking, pushing, asking, solving. Just imagine what 75,000 of those someones can do. When you're on the go, you want something quick and quality. Make Board & Brew your go-to. We've been keeping it real since 79 with fresh breads and freshly roasted meats for our sandwiches. And a secret sauce with its own quote following. Each sandwich is made from scratch using real ingredients like house roasted turkey breast, avocado, and fresh baked bread. Order online or with our wrap for freshness at your fingertips. Well, a career-high 15 for Hugh Baxter. The Tritons have made a half dozen threes so far. They're shooting 65% overall here in this first half. And they lead a UC Davis team that hasn't played in seven weeks by 11 here on Spirit Night. Steve Quiss, Ted Mendenhall with you back inside Remac Arena. The first ever Division I home game for the Tritons. You know, and another thing to pay attention to, and you've mentioned it, that Coach wants to see them on the defensive boards. Jake Killingsworth with zero points, but he's got four of their nine rebounds all on the defensive end. Foul was on a negway before he went to the break, his second, and Hadley continues this three-point onslaught. Their seventh made three of this first half, and he's a perfect three for three, much like Baxter. And Steve, you and I have seen this before. The Tritons can get on a roll from beyond the arc and overwhelm teams. Manyan misses, another offensive rebound and a chance at a reset and a quick three taken by Fuller and a foul on the floor. How about the Australian connection in this one? A perfect six for six. I mean, what in the Randy Bennett St. Mary's is going on here today for the Tritons? Well, maybe we uh, should stop by the supermarket on the way home and get them some Hot Pockets. <laughs> That's right. Hot pockets. <laughs> By the way, Caden Rashid, unfortunately, with his shoe off, and he's got ice on that left left ankle, it appears. 
All right, now you rolled the dice putting Hadley back on the floor. He just picked up his third personal and a steal there by Mikey and gets it to Rockamore. Tried to save it from going out of bounds, but looked like he blew out a tire. Boy, Mikey had some troubles there, dribbled it off his foot, then off the defender's face, and then somehow got it up to Rockamore, who couldn't save it after that. Turns out to be the second steal of the evening for UC San Diego. You know, they lead the Big West Conference coming in at almost nine steals a game. Mannion, great bounce pass inside, and drawing contact is Fuller. Eric Olin uh, downplayed that a little bit, saying that the stats are skewed because of Saint, the St. Saint Catharines games. But hey, the stats are, are what they are. And they do play well defensively, and they do get a lot of steals anyway. And that's because of guys like Mikey Howell, Bryce Pope, that uh, really have quick hands and are active on the defensive side. Yeah, we shouldn't forget that Tony Rochak emerged from that two-game series with 10 steals himself. <laughs> That's right. Against uh, NAIA opponent St. Catherine. One of two shots made there by Fuller. The lead is 13. The biggest lead of the game has been 15 for the Tritons. Baxter to a cutting Howell, and he turned it over again. Three turnovers yeah. for Howell. That's unlike Mikey, who last year had a three to one turnover, assist to turnover ratio, which was one of the tops in Division Two. That's sticking with UC Davis. That drew a big hand from the coaching staff on the bench there. Triton's just not letting UC Davis get any flow on offense. No, nope, they've done a great job of disrupting what Mannion wants to do. He's only got four points. Inside, Fuller backs in over Baxter and gets the bucket. Yeah, Rochek came over on the double team, but just kind of stood there and allowed him to turn around and make that jumper. First bucket of the game for Fuller, who averages eight points a game. Lead is back to 11. Much tighter defensively now by the Aggies. Yep. Rockamore drives in, stops in front of the free throw line, and Rockamore, baby, Rockamore, I'll score from the free throw line. <laughs> the reprise. That's right. I'm going to do a dumb one each time. Mikey saves it ahead to Pope. And Pope lays it in. Back to a 15-point advantage, and Jim Les needs a timeout. His team has not played in seven weeks, and in the first 18 minutes of this first half, they've, they've shown how rusty they are. Well, Mikey Howe making up for one of those turnovers there with a brilliant steal. And as the Aggies are trying to come back defensively, suddenly, or offensively, I should say, suddenly there's nobody. What a great steal by Howell. And then it was just a matter of getting it to the streaking Pope. How about the line on Mikey Howell? No points. He hasn't taken a shot. He's got six assists, which now moves him into third place all by himself at UCSD on the career assist leaderboard. He's got three steals and three turnovers in 15 minutes. So he's evened out the turnovers now with the steals, especially with that last one. Yep, and so Mikey passes Rodney Lusane for third place. So next up is James McCann, who played here in 2010 through 2014. And of course the leader is Darvin Jackson here, late 80s to the early 90s. And uh, Mikey would be 70 away from tying Jackson. Well, if he doesn't get it done this year, chances are he'll be back here next year. Yep, looks like he's going to get a sixth year, right? Everybody gets an additional year here. They're talking about him going to graduate school and getting him enrolled in a, in a grad program somewhere here at UC San Diego. Well, let's hope it's at UC San Diego, right? Yeah, of course. And there's a push. I think they're going to get Pope here. Nope, they're going to get Rockamore instead. That's the first on Rockamore. Team foul number seven, so we're going to get free throws here. Damian Squire is a junior from Montreal, Canada. 13 points a game. He had a 21-point game of the opener against Nichols State here at the free throw line and hits the first end of one and one. He was a top 10 in the Big West a year ago, scoring 13 points per game. He's a good-looking player. I wish I could remember the other Wasatch kid that was at Utah State a couple of years ago with Kata and then went on to Marquette. It'll come to me here shortly. Is that point guard. 
39-25. Coming up on 90 seconds to go here in the half. Rockamore, and it's going to be an offensive foul on Jace Rockamore. Got into the cutting lane there, and Rockamore didn't see him. Good job by Pepper. Second foul on Rockamore. It'll be team foul number eight, but a player control foul, so there won't be any shots on the other end. Instead, it'll go as a turnover, and UC Davis chasing 14 is going to get the basketball. As Mannion brings it up, only four points for Mannion. Looking for an assist here, and he'll get it. Elijah Pepper with a three. He was really hot. He had five of uh, UC Davis's points real quickly. And Pepper had not scored in a while. He's got eight. Lead is 11. And that's knocked away. Terrific steal right there. That is Fuller, and Fuller gives to Squire, who can't finish above the rim. That's a big missed opportunity there for the Aggies. And Rockamore behind his back. Rockamore right where he made it last time. I won't sing this time, but Jace with another bucket. He's got a half dozen. Well, he's got some nifty moves there, too, behind the back and then just rise and fire. Oh, man, Jan, great play, but an even better block by Rochak. And they are doing everything on the scouting report in this first half and a quick timeout, that use it or lose it timeout. 26 and a half seconds to go, 24 on the shot clock, a 13 point lead for the Tritons and what a first half for UC San Diego here on Spirit Night. It really is and it's on both ends of the floor. Uh, that last one highlighted by Rochek's block on Mannion, the leading scorer for UC Davis. Not only does Mannion only have four points, but he's only taken six shots here in this first half. So. You want to put as much space between you and the Aggies as you can before going into the second half because it's hard to believe that Mannion is going to be a single-digit scorer in the second half as well. I, I remember the kid's name, Kobe McEwen. Oh, yes. Remember? I mean, yeah, he was, I remember him. He was something else. And when I was doing, I had the Utah State beat quite a bit as you look at that block by Rocha. I remember thinking to myself, this kid's going to end up at BYU. Like, the Cougars are going to come and raid this guy. He's such a good guard. And instead, he went to Marquette to play in the Big East. Here you look at B.J. Shaw. So, Rochak with a nice block. Check in on how many blocks. That's the first block of the game for either side. And remember, Kennedy Kohler, who we haven't seen much of, comes in leading the conference at a little over a block a game. Yeah, Kennedy Kohler, that's his specialty. Kohler's only played 10 minutes. He has one foul. He's made one shot. We have not seen him in a while. Difference between the shot clock and the game clock is about 2.6 seconds. And that goes off of Killingsworth, and it's a late turnover that could prove costly. I look down, the Tritons, even though they're winning this game by 13, partner, now have a dozen turnovers in this first half. Yeah, it's been a little sloppy on their end, to say the least. And even that one there, Mikey Howe picked up his dribble without really having a plan of where he was going to go with it, and he got himself in trouble. Mannion from the free throw line. Nope. Buzzer sounds, and a tremendous first half here on Spirit Night for UC San Diego. In their first ever Big West Conference home game, the Tritons with a 13-point advantage here at the half. They've made seven three-pointers in the first half. They had as big as a 15-point advantage and have to like the first 20 minutes of hoops here from Remac Arena. As we head to the break, 41-28 Tritons over UC Davis.
Welcome back to Remac Arena. We are at the half where UC San Diego leads UC Davis by a score of 41 to 28. Let's take a look at the team stats dominated by the Tritons in the first half. 71% shooting from the field while holding the Aggies to just 38% and equally as deadly from beyond the arc at 70%, Aggies 43%. Tritons out rebounding them by four, 13 assists on 17 field goals. That is a phenomenal number for UC San Diego. Five assists for the Aggies and points in the paint. The Tritons winning that battle as well. 18 to 12, leading score for the Tritons is Hugh Baxter. He leads all scores with 15, six of eight from the field making all three of his three-pointers. Gabe Hadley with 11 points, four of four from the field, making all three of his three-pointers. Coming back with more at the half, and then we'll have second half action coming for you shortly. Tritons lead at 41-28. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Alyssa Rebecho and I am here with William Kessinger, the co-president of Triton Tide. And we're here to talk a little bit about Triton Tide. So let's hear what he has to say. So William, this is an exciting time to be a Triton. We are officially NCAA division one and playing big West basketball. So how have these changes felt by students across the campus? Definitely, this is a really exciting time for all of us. I would say that there is definitely a new sense of competition. There's a new energy between all of the scholar athletes and students on campus. And there's this development of long-term awareness of our school because UC San Diego is finally competing with other schools athletically that we've already been competing with academically like UC Irvine. Totally, I am so excited for us to be division one as I'm sure a lot of our students are. What is your favorite part about being the Triton Tide co-president? I would say my favorite part about being Triton Tide co-president is, is really taking charge and having hands-on experience, working with scholar athletes and trying to get students more engaged. Usually during a normal season, my favorite part would be being in the student section and leading and feeling that energy in the arena. But now we're just doing our best over Zoom to keep up that energy and live streaming on ESPN3. That's great. I remember when I was able to cheer on the sidelines, I always love seeing Triton Tide out there showing the spirit. So I appreciate you guys a lot for that. So as a student, what do you think will be a long-term impact of Division I here at UC San Diego? By participating in Division I sports, I think we're really working towards raising our national profile and it's going to continue to add value to all of our degrees after we graduate. More people will know about us, our campus, how well-rounded we are as scholars and as athletes and as fans. Um, our academics have always been top tier, but now we are finally getting that recognition for our athletics that we deserve. It's gonna be really awesome being able to watch Division I basketball, baseball, and softball on ESPN3. That's really huge. And I can't wait to come back in 10 years and see us still playing Division I against these other really iconic schools. Great. I do think the Triton Tide is a main source of spirit impact on UCSD. So it's great to hear that we are moving up with those things going into Division One. And another question for you, William, how has Triton Tide evolved during this pandemic? So we definitely cannot be leading the student section in REMAC, which sucks. But at the same time, we've been putting on as many virtual fan fests as we can every week so we can get out there and support our basketball team, and we have been just trying to raise student engagement in those ways. We have had trivia nights, we've been doing Kahoot games, which are pretty awesome, and just doing the best that we can to unite the university through Zoom. Great, yeah, all, I love all the Kahoot games. So if you are a Triton student watching this, come join us on three and four o'clock on Fridays for Triton Fan Fest. Great. So I know this year has not exactly been what we expected as students, but there are still a lot of things to be excited about. So can you share some of the new opportunities we have for the students? Definitely. So we recently renewed Triton Tide, which is our official student engagement spirit and athletics association. And students are really starting to come together and build that sense of community. We have seven colleges now, but all of us at the end of the day are Tritons that are 
uniting under one university. We've been having virtual fan fest events where we can all come together and celebrate blue and gold. It's really cool to be a part of something where we are all united. So what would you say to a new Triton that's coming to UC San Diego about the campus pride, athletics, and getting involved? This is the new era, and there are so many ways to get involved. I would say to a new Triton that the best way to build value in your college experience is to become more invested in your school and by getting involved in as many ways as possible, whether that's by supporting our athletics, getting involved with the arts. At the end of the day, we're all Tritons and we're all here to support one another. Now, what is your favorite Triton Tide memory? My favorite memory of Triton Tide was the very first time that our leadership team got together in Remac. We had some of our adult members bring us pizza from Woodstock and just that energy of knowing that we were going to be reforming and building something great together as we transition to division one was something so unforgettable and bridging those connections with people. I will never forget it. Great. Well, thank you so much, William. We really appreciate you being here with us today. And remember everybody, stay safe, stay strong and go Triton. Tritons by 13 at the break. Let's take a look at some first half highlights, Ted. Well, the Tritons red hot on the offensive side and the Aggies struggling to find offense of their own, able to do so by creating uh, deep, uh, creating points off of turnovers. Tritons turned it over 12 times in that first half and gave up 12 points off of those turnovers. The Tritons though were red hot on the offensive side, shooting over 70% overall and seven of 10 beyond the arc. Now, it's not often you see a team turn it over 12 times in the first half and still lead by 13 as they have possession of the basketball to start the uh, second half. But it, it's happened here on Spirit Night. Tritons lead UC Davis 41-28. They've been up by as many as 15. Career high for Hugh Baxter and his Aussie pal Gabe Hadley has 11. Two of them have made six of the seven threes that the Tritons made in the first half. They shot 71% in that half. We'll see if they can keep it up, keep the pedal to the metal, if you will, here in this second half. Baxter with Pepper on him, makes the extra pass. Hadley and his first miss from beyond the arc. Another thing we'll keep an eye on depth-wise is that Caden Rashid did not come out of the locker room uh, after halftime, appeared to hurt his ankle and uh, so maybe working on him to see if he can get ready tomorrow. Yeah, he only played two minutes and 43 seconds, a quick bucket to start. Mannion had a, a tough first half. They kept him out of the paint. He was two for seven in that first half with just four points. He's the Big West's leading scorer. Yeah, that would be my biggest worry is can you do that twice? And missing the chippy right there was Baxter. This is not a good start on either the offensive or defensive end for the Tritons. Another key for the Triton defense was those defensive rebounds you talked about. They had 12 of them in the first half, limiting the Aggies to just one possession and done. Tritons looking for their first ever Big West Conference win in what is their first ever official Big West Conference game. And count it, what a spectacular play by Jake Killingsworth and he is fouled. Well, the grad transfer just felt the contact coming and uh, did a great job finishing that off after contact, Caleb Fuller with the foul. And some quick substitutions and to the line will go Jake Killingsworth. We talked about Rashid not returning after the what looked to be an ankle sprain. We hope it's nothing more serious than that. We also will mention again that Jake Kasikowski is out as well. So you're down two guys in the rotation here due to ankle tweaks. Killingsworth completes the three-point play, his first three points of the night through the first handful of games. He was the Tritons' leading scorer. Because UC San Diego shot so well, that was only their second free throw of the game. And Mannion drove into the Aussie duo right there and was able to draw a contact. So Baxter with the foul. That'll be the second on Baxter and two shots coming here for Mannion. Well, if I'm the Aggies, that's the way I continue to attack this Triton defense, try to get foul trouble on them, knowing that they don't have a ton of depth. Again, UC Davis playing for the first time in seven weeks since December the 4th. And in that first half, they looked every bit as much as a team that hadn't played in seven weeks. And where would they be? I mean, almost half of their first half points came off of those 12 
you see San Diego Triton turnovers. Yeah, I mean, you cut those down and continue to shoot that way, you're going to blow most teams out. Opening two minutes of this first half. It is a 12-point advantage for the Tritons. They've been up by as many as 15. We'll have another game tomorrow at 2 o'clock in this two-game Big West series. Killingsworth inside to a wide open Baxter with a finger roll, and he scores it. They, they just lost him in the paint on defense. Guarding so closely defensively, it just gave Baxter so much more room to roam. He rewrites his career high now. 17 points for the senior from Australia. Mannion looking for three. Missed it, and it's Rockamore clearing the rebound. Chance in transition here for the Tritons, who are up 14. Chance to take their biggest lead of the afternoon. Rockamore drives. Rockamore gets a clean look, and there it is. 16-point lead for the Tritons, their biggest of the night. Rockamore's got eight. He's got a quick first step. Carried Damian Square right to the rack. The red shirt freshman from Foothill High School in Henderson, Nevada. Over the top, a Negwe there, and boy, I mean, there's nothing Hadley can do, right? You got three first half fouls. You just gotta let a Negwe put that thing up and score it. Yeah, at this point, Hadley's much more important to them on the offensive side. Hadley looking for the screen from Baxter. Baxter seemed like he was open, but Rockamore the reverse, and he's got 10. Rockamore, baby, Rockamore. I'll score on the reverse. Okay, I'm, I'm done for the night. And a foul by Mikey Howell on Mannion on the drive. We should mention this about Mikey Howell. Six assists in the first half. He did have five turnovers but his six assists now puts him third all-time in career assist at UC San Diego with 426. I know there's a line, he gets another steal. How about that? And that's his fourth steal and count it. Oh, what a start to the second half. Well, you especially like it because the Aggies came out and got four quick points with the Tritons not able to finish. And they're keeping their foot firmly planted on the gas pedal here to start the second half. 13 for Gabe Hadley between Hadley and the other Australian Baxter. They are having that uh, St. Mary's type of night here with 30 combined of the 52 for the Tritons. And here's Squire, and Squire missed one, and saving it from going out of bounds is Baxter. Those are the shots that Squire wants. It's got to go down if you want to stay in this game. Catch and shoot three by Hadley is good. He's got 16. Are you kidding me? It's a 21-point advantage for the Triton. Jim Les right now just trying to get to the media timeout. That's why I didn't call timeout here. 55-34. The Australian connection now with 35 combined points here of the 55. And Squire can't get it to go down. That's a couple of chippies that he's wound up missing. And what a start for the Tritons to this second half, building up the lead. The first couple of possessions, both offensively and defensively, weren't very good. But uh, they really kick-started it before the first media timeout. Hadley leading the way. The boys are fired up here on Spirit Night. 21-point lead for the Tritons. Oh. Did you know there are more than 200,000 living UC San Diego alumni worldwide? Triton alumni can stay connected 24-7 online through Tritons Connect. Learn more at tritonsconnect.com. Almost 25 minutes of floor time, and the Tritons are shooting a blistering 71% from the field. That's 23 amazing. of 32. And for Baxter and Hadley, the Australian connection, they have 13 of 17 from the field. That's what they've made, 13 of their 17 field goals. My math stinks. They've actually got 33 combined, not 35. And they're looking for three more. All right, doesn't matter now. Now they've got 36, so I was sort of right. But Hadley, man, 19 for Hadley, the New Mexico State transfer, who was here last couple of years in the Division II era. The lead is 58-34. And here's a three missed off the front of the rim by Squire. 
And the rebound corralled by Hadley. You know, something that's underrated about Rockamore, he's the one that's been on Mannion most of tonight. Rochak. And Shaw thought he blocked it, but instead a foul is going to be called. Plays really good defense. He, we see his quickness on offense, but you don't really think about it as much on defense. There's the block that you just saw there with Shaw. But um, Rockamore doing a heck of a job on the defensive end. And so here's Tony at the free throw line. He's got three points after making that free throw. The lead is 59 to 34. And again, you have to feel for UC Davis. Out of no fault of their own, they haven't had any positive test. They've been working their rear off to play, and they have been unable to play because of Yolo County and the restrictions since December the 4th against William Jessup. So. Well, and if you're the Tritons, if there's a time to play UC Davis, this would be that time. Rockamore into Squire, and that's uh, a nice move there by Squire. You can see the junior taking advantage of the uh, redshirt freshman there and getting him to get into the air and getting a body into him. And so now they'll have a chance to score two shots at the free throw line. That's the third foul on Jace Rockamore, who has 10 points off the bench here for Eric Olin's team. Well, you got the Aggies who are getting to the line but have not been able to take advantage. Before that shot there, they were just 5 of 10 from the charity stripe. And they're a good free throw shooting team coming into this. They were shooting 82% as a team. So both shots made there by Squire. He's in double figures with 10. The lead is 24 for the Tritons, 60 to 36. Howell to Baxter, back out Rockamore. Went into a zone, Triton's having trouble getting inside. Rochak misses the three from the outside. You don't, you don't see Tony take too many of those shots. Mannion, and here's Shaw. Shaw got a little mismatch there, but able to defend and take it away and force a turnover was Mikey Howell. Rochak counted, fouled on the other end on the run out. Chance at a three-point play, and that would be another steal and more disruption there by Mikey Howell. And how about the big man, Hugh Baxter, leading that break there? He almost got caught up there, was able to get the pass away just before he traveled with it, and a silly foul on Mannion there. No, they didn't give it to Mannion. Who'd they give it to? I think it, it was um, 24, and that would be Adebayo. And Rochak completes the three-point play. We're, partner, we're approaching a 30-point advantage. Again, the Tritons are a team transitioning to Division I. They won't be a full Division I team till the 2025 season. Not eligible for postseason play. Over the top inside, and a bucket there by Christian Inegwe, who is a San Jose State transfer. Well, you know why the lead has increased? Guess how many times the Tritons have turned it over this half? Uh, I would guess none. Zero, that's correct. From 12 in the first half, which was remarkable. Killingsworth to the corner, Hadley with a head fake. Inside a 10 to shoot, underneath to Rochek. Rochek makes the extra pass. Oh, but look out, there is an injured oh, man. UC Davis player and Adebayo, Ada Adebayo went down and he is hurt. I don't I think he got hit in the face. Yeah, I think so. I didn't see it. It was on the back part of that play as uh, Mikey Howell was passing it off. For Mikey Howell, that's his first bucket right there. It's 65-38. Yeah, athletic trainer over there able to at least get Adebayo to calm down. Oh, yeah, Mikey Howell got him right in the chops with his elbow, inadvertent, of course. Yep. Now, I, the officials are going to go over and look at that because this could very well be a flagrant foul. Nice. And if so, it would be two shots and the ball for the UC Davis Aggies. I, I doubt if it would be a flagrant two, which could mean an ejection for Howell. Yeah, I think you're right, though. I think they are going to get a flagrant there anytime those elbows are flying. That's usually the call. And again, nothing purposeful on, on Mikey's part. He feels bad about it. 
They did not initially call a foul at all. So I don't think they're going to call this at all as an intentional foul. We wish nothing but the best here for Adebayo again out of London, England, Barking Abbey School. And he took a pretty uh, flush shot right on the side of the face. At this point, no indication at all that it's going to be a flagrant one. I mean, they, normally if it was going to be, they would call the coaches together. Now, I'm not sure in this COVID-19 protocol how close they can even go to each other. but well, it's Good to see that Adebayo is sitting up now, and let's see if he's able to walk off okay. Getting no indication that it's a flagrant. Again, the officials went over to the monitor and looked. So I think it's just going to be a bucket for the Tritons, and it'll be UC Davis basketball. And Mikey does not feel good about what happened. I'll tell you what, and there's another game tomorrow, too. Remember, these two teams will square off at two tomorrow. But there doesn't seem to be much barking from either bench, though, at this point. No, I don't think there was any intent, and both sides realize that and uh, wish the best for Adebayo. I hope. Yeah, I think Mikey's probably going to go over there right now. It'll be UC Davis basketball, and they're down 65-38, so no flagrant one. Adebayo will now be attended to by the trainers. They don't, they don't get to go into a locker room now because of COVID-19 protocols. Pass up over the top, letting his defender fly by was Anegwe, and Anegwe scores the bucket. It's their best chance getting the ball inside. Tritons have done a great job of defending the paint to this point. 25-point advantage. Rochak gets the double team. And then switches places with Howell. Puts up a three. Misses. And Tritons can't secure the offensive rebound. And Baugh had it knocked away. My goodness, that's Mikey Howell again. Numbers back the other way. Loose ball. And it's going to be out of bounds. And it is going to be Davis basketball. Last touch by Hadley. And remember, Hadley had to be careful how aggressive he was there on that drive playing with three fouls. They can't afford for him to get his fourth here. How about this line by Mikey Howell? Two points on the field goal you just saw there yep. a moment ago when he had the contact on Adebayo. Seven assists, four steals, five turnovers. And Rochak off another Davis turnover, throws it down for the bucket. Speaking of steals, he leads the Big West in that category coming into today. That's 13 turnovers for UC Davis here in the basketball game. Shaw against Rochak puts it up and will score the bucket. 67-42. Yeah, they made a couple nice plays, and you're thinking, oh, they're they're staying in striking distance. They're down 25. Yep. You know, I forgot these two teams were in the CCAA at the Division II level about 16 years ago. This is their first meeting since they were conference rivals. Rochak just blew right past his defender and scored. B.J. Shaw slips down, and it's back to a 27-point advantage. Again, the Tritons have only played now four Division I games, actually three and a half against Division I opponents. Mannion tried to force it, and here's Howell back the other way. Hadley for three and a 30-point lead over UC Davis here on Spirit Night. Wow, nobody guarded Hadley on that play. This is unbelievable. Again, Davis has not played in seven weeks, so this is not an indication of where they would be at this time without those county restrictions and where they're going to be in a few weeks. Great step back jumper there by Damian Squire. And you know, at this point, I know, I know they're all tough and they're, you know, they all want to win, but at this point, maybe maybe the victory for them is just getting back out on the court. Sure. And uh, we've seen that with, with the Tritons. Yep. I think if they didn't play that UC Irvine game. Oh, Rochak to Polk. He can't score the bucket. If they don't play that UC Irvine game, they would have been in a similar position as Mannion scores at the end there. Count it. Mikey Howell with the foul, and Mannion will be at the free throw line with a chance to build on his 10-point night. 
72-46, the Tritons with a lead. 10.35 to go here from Remac Arena, the steal by Rochak, and he throws it down. Tritons in command. Well, the Tritons here on Spirit Night in their first ever Big West Conference home game don't look like a team that have lost three straight by double figures. Don't look like a team whose last win came December the 23rd against NAIA opponent St. Catherine. I mean, they're putting a beat down now on a UC Davis team that hasn't played in seven weeks. Mannion here at the free throw line. He's the leading scorer in the conference at 21 points a game, and that gives him 11. And it's 72-47. And we're talking about a, a kid in Mannion. He's on the Lou Henson Award Watch list, which goes to the top mid-major player in Division I. And you know, the other thing, too, is you can say Davis hasn't played for seven weeks, but I think Jim Less will say when any team makes 70 points or 70% of their shots, and you get another easy one there as Hadley now has 24. I mean, there's not, not many teams that look like they would beat UC San Diego tonight the way they're making shots. No, I agree with everything you're saying, partner, but I will also say this about Eric Olin and his crew. After they got spanked around a little bit in that UC Santa Barbara series, you knew they were going to come back with a little more motivation in this uh, Big West opener at home. Pepper got the offensive rebound but was unable to convert the second chance opportunity. Triton shooting 71%. 30 of 42, they've made 10 threes. Hadley with 24 on 9 of 10 shooting, and Rockamore just carried the ball out of bounds on the dribble. Yeah, I think he thought he was fouled, but didn't get the call. And there's just the second turnover of the second half for a Triton's team that led by 13 at the break despite a dozen turnovers. And again, we'll be right back at it about 20 hours after the conclusion of this one, a 2 o'clock start tomorrow from Remac Arena. I think you're going to see an entirely different UC Davis team. I think so. They might be a little more tired because they wouldn't sleep. Turnover by the Aggies. Rockamore and a double dribble on Rockamore. Carried it on his hip there, trying to dribble it behind the back. And you saw Mikey Howe there. Gave him the palms down, like, calm down, settle down. We just need to take care of the basketball right now. By the way, this is the Big West Conference opener for UC Davis. Pepper misses. One thing Coach O talked about when I had a chance to talk to him yesterday was first shot defense. They didn't like it against Irvine, right? Irvine would get a lot of second chance opportunities. If we can just hold them to one shot as Hadley fires away, we'll be in good shape, and, and he's right. Yeah, Tritons with 18 defensive rebounds at that last time out. That is doing great work on the defensive boards. Wild shot by Damian Squire. 8.51 separates the Tritons from their first ever Division I win, their first ever Big West Conference win, and their first ever Big West Conference Division I home win. Could be a lot of first here tonight if they can close this thing out. Every indication is they will. Here's a foul away from the ball. They're Damian, gonna get Squire. Yeah, Damian Squire getting tangled up with Hugh Baxter there. Here's another thing that uh, you like to see out of the Tritons. 22 assists on 13 field goals. That is a great job of sharing the basketball. Quick inbound and Killingsworth can't connect on the three. Rebounded by Aaron Murphy, who's in there for the first time. Richard Freshman from Modesto Christian. And down in the low block, a bucket by Caleb Fuller. Damian Squire with the assist. Five for Fuller, who averages eight points a game. 74-49, coming up on eight minutes to go. Hadley. And off of Mikey Howell and out of bounds. And so for Howell, that's his sixth turnover of the game. Eight assists. Six turnovers and four steals for Mikey. Yeah, that's something that uh, he'll clean up as the season yep. goes along, no doubt. Remember last year, almost three to one, one of the best in the nation at assist to turnover ratio. There is Murphy saying, I want to play more, coach. High motor, good pass. Rockamore's got an assist. Baxter with a career high 19. 
Well, what a great job rewarding the big man for running the floor there, too. Baxter out in front of everybody. If they were playing soccer, he would have been off sides. Rockamore's got a second assist. And that takes us to a media timeout. 7.34 to go. All Tritons here on Spirit Night, minus you, the fans at home. We can't wait to get you back in the building. You see San Diego 76, you see Davis 49. Yeah, so not everything is positive after attaining a 27-point lead here with 7.34 to go. You can see Caden Rashid, who is the eighth man in the rotation, but in the rotation nonetheless, is in a boot on crutches. And so he's the casualty in this one so far. And as we talked about, but we'll revisit because it bears repeating, Jake Kasikowski is out too with an ankle injury. That's going to be a backcourt violation on Davis and another turnover for the Aggies, their 14th of the game. So now you're really talking about just a seven-man rotation for Eric Olin's team when they take the floor tomorrow. Well, now I see uh, Ade Adebayo coming back out to the Aggies bench, and he's got a wrap around his head. It looks yeah. like possibly over his right eye. Boy, I hope that kid's okay. Me too. Yep. That is a big time casualty right there. That looks like something out of a, a World War II movie. A poor young man, so we, we wish him the best and I wonder if they might not be taking him for further evaluation. It would look like at this point. Because the way he went down, man, that, that really did frighten me. So we we hope Adebayo's okay. Whether he gets a, winds up getting an MRI or an X-ray. Does not look good on the drive, and Rochak in there again to disrupt that shot by Pepper. They've really played well defensively. We've talked about offensively as Hadley was looking to rewrite his career high. Fuller through traffic, nothing there. Squire gets a couple of offensive rebounds and is fouled. He'll get a chance at a three-point play. Yeah, you mentioned uh, playing well on both sides of the floor, and it's really a complete game for the Tritons to this point with just under seven minutes to go. I mean, shooting for the game, 67% for the game? That's incredible. Yep. But then defensively, holding the Aggies to just 37%. Squire, the leading scorer here, the bright spot for Davis with uh, 15 points. We were talking in the break. The Tritons defensively have done a good job against the Big West's leading scorer in Ezra Mannion, really not allowing him to get into the paint. He's made four shots. I remember one was just outside in the first half of the lane. He's got three of his 11 at the uh, free throw line. So you haven't let him have a three-point shot, and you really haven't ha allowed him to penetrate and score big buckets. Killingsworth. 14 to shoot. Hadley's career high is 25. He's sitting on 24 points, and he'll turn it over as Rockamore couldn't handle the pass in front of his bench. Yeah, it's not going to award him many points there, too, getting assistant coach Nick Booker on the side of the head <laughs> with the basketball. By the way, the newest addition, the only coaching change in the offseason, Nick Booker joins the team from the Eastern Washington staff. He was a guy that uh, in the early 2000s played at uh, the Bishop School in La Jolla That's right. here in the San Diego section. So Grew up in Oceanside. Yep. All alone Fuller. Boy, the defense, just like the parting of the Red Sea there. Had a quick look at the basket, took advantage. He's got seven. 76-54. You certainly don't want to get the pedal off the off the uh, gas pedal here, or your foot off the gas pedal. Well, and especially since most of the starters for the Aggies are on the bench right now. Yeah, Rockamore with a floater in the lane right on the Big West logo. Rockamore has a career high in this one as well. He's in double figures. Ba missed off the... Back of the rim. Rockamore with 12. And Rochak. Rochak's got 13. Well, the, the fast break points have been amazing for UC San Diego. 
20 to five in fast break points. My goodness, Squire steps back and gets fouled by Rochak in the act of shooting at three. And how about points in the paint? The Tritons have 80 points. Half of them have been in the paint. So it's like pick your poison here. If you're UC Davis, what do you guard, right? You're getting 40 points in the paint and you wind up making 10 threes in a game. Well, we've seen as many fast break points as I can ever remember in a Triton game. A lot of transition buckets where they're just getting out in front of the Aggie defense. And you and I, we've been doing these games. I think this is my fifth year and, and yours as well. Um, this this looks like the way it was the ending to the Division Two era. Yeah, it does. Where they were just so dominant last year and were 30 and one at the end of the season. As Pope winds up leaving. Pope's body of work in this one, seven points on three of six shooting. Three rebounds in 23 minutes. 80 to 56. Triton's biggest lead against this Division I opponent was 30 points. Can you imagine what this arena would sound like right yeah. now on Spirit Night? Yep, on a Saturday afternoon where it's gloomy outside, where people wouldn't want to be outside, you'd want to be inside. Coming up on five minutes to go, Rochak, the Regis College transfer. Turns it over. Pepper on the run out. Pulls up from just inside the free throw line. No good. Offensive rebound. And scoring it there is Kennedy Kohler. We hadn't mentioned much about Kennedy Kohler. He played a lot early. He's only logged 12 minutes in the game at a quick timeout here. And this is going to be a media timeout. 4.54 to go in regulation. The Tritons 80. UC Davis 58. We invite you to join us again tomorrow night when the Tritons and Aggies return to Remac Arena for the second game of this weekend series. Tip-off for this Big West Conference matchup is scheduled for 2 o'clock. Watch it live only on ESPN3. Well, the Tritons called that timeout before we went to break, and the intensity a tad off from Eric Olin's troops. So, you know, with 4.54 to go, he wants to make sure they can close this thing out. I know we're here at a fine research institute at UC San Diego, but as you said, something doesn't compute here. Tritons have 19 turnovers in this game and still at one point had a 30-point second-half lead. No, that's not usually how that works. I wonder if one of these data geeks can figure that out. And a new career high for Hadley. 27, another three for Hadley, another assist for Howell. And he, he might catch uh, Darvin Jackson by the end of the game, for goodness sakes. I'm going to wait to see if this thing will update here. But that is the 10th assist by Mikey Howell in this game. And for Gabe Hadley, 10 of 13 shooting. A career high 27 points. He's made 7 of 10 threes. There's something that Gabe Hadley likes about January because his previous career high was January 30th, almost a year ago to the day. He came in only averaging... Seven points a game did the 6'4 senior from Australia. He was in his third year here on the program after transferring from New Mexico State. We talked about the fact that the Aggies went to the NCAA tournament his only year there, and ironically, they happened to play here in San Diego. They lost to Clemson. But Hadley must have said, man, I like this area. I like the weather, and I'm going to go from Division One to Division Two, and we'll wrap up his career back in Division One." And say hello to our friends out there in Australia. It's almost noontime on Saturday. He's made that trip several times. He said it gets worse every time. <laughs> that is a long <laughs> haul. I was watching, and I think you too, some Australian League baseball, yeah. Australian Baseball League. On yeah, fans in the stands and everything. Uh, that, was a, that was amazing. And we're talking fans in the stands all on top of each other without masks. So they've done something right down there in Australia to rid themselves so far of the coronavirus, although we know it you know, come back at any time. 83-58, and the officials are looking over at the monitor, and they're going to review the whistle to see whether or not more time or less time should be put back on the clock or taken off the clock. They've really called, I, I thought, a good game, this officiating crew. Yeah, I agree. We understand um, Bill Vinovich was supposed to be on this crew, he was a Super Bowl referee, but at the last minute, 
was taken off the crew, and I'm not sure whether or not he's – maybe he's working on uh, Sunday in one of the NFL games. Well, I, I could see that. Yeah. Hadley at the line here for two. 28 points, a new career high for Gabe Hadley. Last season he averaged just 8.7 points per game, but he made 63 threes, and he shot almost – 50% from the field last year. Another whistle. And the clock was not running that time. And at this point, Eric Olin wants as much time to tick off the clock as he possibly can and get out of here with their first ever Big West Conference win, their first ever win against a Division I opponent as a Division I team themselves. A lot of first tier for that man. You'll take it however you get it, but to get it in this fashion is special. And just uh, like you said, it reminds you of their dominating days going back to last season. Baugh unleashes the three, misses. Kept alive on the offensive glass by Negwe, and Mannion drives in, misses, and Baxter rips away the rebound. Well, they did like the fact that they thought Davis was a little bit smaller than the other Division I opponents they played in Irvine and Santa Barbara, so they thought they had a chance. Not sure they thought they would win by double digits or lead by 30. They've got a 27-point lead now. And that shot missed by Kennedy Kohler taking the three. Another offensive rebound. Anegwe, no, got another second-chance opportunity, and this time scores it. Well, part of the reason why Eric Olin called that timeout the last time, the intensity, yes, but also you've got to keep it up because you still have another game tomorrow. Don't let your guard down now. Yep, and you'll be without two of your guards. Great pass and <laughs> right over the top to a wide open backstory. I mean, that has been there for them all day. All day, yep. Killingsworth has an assist. If you're talking now, you're, they're closing in on 30 assists here on 34 made field goals. This has just been a clinic. Back to a 27-point advantage. Mannion rises up over Rockamore and misses. Well, congratulations to Eric Olin and his staff and these student athletes. You get their first Big West victory, first Division I victory. Yep, get it done on uh, Spirit Night. Too bad the fans couldn't be here, but we hope next year. Career nights all around for Rockamore and Hadley and Baxter. And a turnover. And tomorrow they'll be without Rashid and Kosakowski because of ankle injuries. Hope they're nothing serious. Pepper in the corner buries the three. And it's 87-63. A dozen, make it 11 for Pepper rather. On the next dead ball, Rochak will come in. We'll also take our final media break as well. 87-63. Boy, Baxter almost got away from a Negway again. And here's Rockamore driving. Rockamore step back jumper, no good. Pepper yeah. saves it from going out of bounds. That's something Rockamore keeps working on it. That could be a money shot for him. He's going to be a terrific player in a couple of years. Mannion, the crossover dribble. Shot goes in and out, out of bounds. Substitutions and a break in the action. 125 separating the Tritons from their first ever Division I victory, and they could exit this building 3-3 three and three here on this Friday afternoon. 87-63, UC San Diego. Triton Tide, the moment you've all been waiting for with Spirit Night being virtual this year. We have the honor of bringing you the 26th Annual Cup of Cheer winner. Drum roll, please. And your 26th Cup of Cheer winner is Eleanor Roosevelt College. Congratulations, and we hope to see you all soon back here in the arena. For more information, visit UCSDTritons.com slash Triton Tide. All our great fans going to miss a first here in person, the first ever Big West Conference win, first ever Division I win. Trace Ramsey, London Taylor are in, along with Martin Tom Bay and Matt Gray, who we thought we would see, along with Justin Pratt, so a new five. They turn it over, 
and leads to an easy fast break bucket there. 13 points for Elijah Pepper, who averages 10 points a game. Inside of a minute to go, Tritons were up by as many as 30. They're going to wind up shooting over 60% for the game. They turn it over on back-to-back -back possessions, and a foul is ran Pekka. Oh, the man. freshman I, was trying I to pull away. I think London Taylor just got kicked in the face. Let's see, oh yeah. Can't afford any more casualties, especially out of the guard spots with Rashid going down in the first half and now on crutches in a boot. And of course, Kasikowski shooting forward, but not serious as far as Kasikowski's concerned. It will miss the weekend, which will mean he'll miss at least three straight games. And, of course, our thoughts uh, again with uh, Ade Adebayo, yep. who has left the arena, no doubt, headed to the local hospital. And there is Caden Rashid. So tomorrow the Tritons will have seven in their rotation as they go for the sweep over Davis. Again, UC San Diego is not officially in the Big West standings. So if you look at the standings, they're not officially in them. This is the opener for UC Davis in the conference after not playing for seven weeks. So they'll drop to 0-1-1. The Tritons will be 3-3 three three overall, but of course it won't be reflected in those standings. Gray looking for the assist, and Taylor's got his first bucket of the season. Nice pass there by Gray. London Taylor's previous high three points against Cal State Monterey Bay. And that was his career high on January the 2nd, 2020, and got them all from the free throw line. So that very well could have been his first field goal in his uh, three-year stay here. He's a redshirt sophomore. Well, that's got to feel good for that young man. Here at the free throw line is Pekka. And Taylor had to figure I'm going to get something out of this and go and get roughed up like the first 30 seconds I'm in the game. Pekka, high school freshman from Estonia, 89-69, a 20-point advantage. Tritons don't even have to shoot this one up, and they'll get out of here with their first ever Big West win, and they'll do it fairly quickly in their Division I stay, and they're going to do it by 20 points. How about that? Congratulations to Eric Olin. The Triton team, the Triton Athletic Department, the entire school, alumni, there you have it. Didn't take long to stay in Division I to pick up their first ever Division I win. Mark it down on this date, Friday, January the 22nd. They get all sorts of career high games from the likes of Baxter and Hadley and Rockamore, and they beat a Davis team who hadn't played in seven weeks, 89 to 69. Yeah, it's kind of cool to see them gathering here at center court and enjoying this a little bit. Some remarkable numbers for Baxter and Hadley. 50 of the 89 points scored. Mikey Howell had 10 assists and 6 turnovers. Jace Rockamore was 6 of 7 from the floor, a dozen points. The Tritons wound up committing 20 turnovers but still wound up winning this game. So. They have their first ever win as a Division I team, their first ever Big West Conference win, their first ever Division I home win. A lot of firsts today as the Tritons win at 89-69. For our terrific production crew above us and below us and my partner Ted Mendenhall, we thank you so much. We'll be back here on Saturday at 2 o'clock. Good afternoon from 